If you are a regular fan of my channel, you probably know that I love looking back at college football history. I think there's a beauty in the game's history, and a lot of that love can be linked to the fact that I was born and raised in New Jersey, where the first ever college football game was played. With bowl season starting up this weekend, I thought there would never be a better time to look back at the history of college football bowl games, and how they have evolved over the years. This is the history of college football bowl season. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I plan to release a video every day from now until Christmas. Also, let me know what your favorite college football bowl game is in the comment section below. Mine is the Rose Bowl followed by the Idaho Potato Bowl. The history of college football bowl games traces all the way back to 1902, 65 years before the Super Bowl and 112 years before the college football playoff. The Tournament of Roses Association wanted to set up a tournament east-west football game, which took place at Tournament Park in Pasadena, California. The game was played between the University of Michigan and the University of Stanford, which resulted in a 49-0 bludgeoning of Stanford by Michigan. The game would not return for 14 years due to the blowout and was instead replaced by ostrich racing and Roman-style chariot races until 1916, when the game would once again return. This time around, it was played between the undefeated Washington State College and Brown University. Washington State had only allowed 10 points all season long, while Brown had outscored opponents 167-32, leading to them being selected to play as the East representative. This game would be much closer with a halftime score of 0-0 until Washington State pulled away in the second half to win 14-0. The following year, Oregon beat Penn 14-0 as well. 1918 would be a special year as it matched up the Mare Island Mariners, which represented the Marine Corps stationed in Mare Island Naval Shipyard in Vallejo, California, and the Camp Lewis Army, which represented the United States Army's 91st Division. In 1920, Harvard beat Oregon 7-6 in the closest matchup of the series to that point. In 1922, the Rose Bowl Stadium was finally built in Pasadena and accommodated over 40,000 fans at the time. The design of the stadium was to replicate the bowl-like shape that Yale football stadium had and it was the first year the game was recognized as the Rose Bowl. The reason these games are called bowl games is due to the fact that the games were played in bowl-like stadiums and the reason the Rose Bowl is considered the granddaddy of them all because it was the first. The Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, and Sun Bowl followed in 1935 when southern cities realized how much tourism would come to watch these games. Technically, the Orange Bowl had begun in 1932 with the name of the Festival of Palms Bowl, but was not recognized by the NCAA until 1935, because one team was guaranteed a spot, then regardless of record. Due to the success of the Rose Bowl and the Festival of Palms Bowl, Colonel James M. Thompson and Fred Digby felt New Orleans would be a perfect place to host a bowl game on New Year's Day, and Digby built support over a multi-year period until the game came to fruition in 1935. The game has been played in New Orleans every year since, except in 2006 when the game was moved to Atlanta due to New Orleans still recovering from Hurricane Katrina. According to Oldest.org, there actually is a Sugar Bowl, which is a solid silver trophy made in 1830 that was gifted to New Orleans Midwinter Sports Association by the Waldhorn Company, Inc. in 1935. The silver trophy is featured all over the Sugar Bowl as it's the logo and the Sugar Bowl trophy, though the trophy is a replica of the real Sugar Bowl. Out of all the mentioned games so far, the one that may stick out the most is the Sun Bowl. The Sun Bowl was hosted as a fundraising event for local service clubs in El Paso and has since become the city's number one national attraction. According to the Sun Bowl, the Sun Bowl has hosted some of the greats of the game, Tony Dorsett, Barry Sanders, Don Minard, James Lofton, Carson Palmer, LaDainian Tomlinson, and more recently Jonathan Stewart, Toby Gerhardt, Ryan Broyles, Victor Butler, and Joey Harrington. Seven of the ten winningest programs of all time has, have participated in the Sun Bowl, and 30 college programs that have won national championships in the past have appeared as well. It is the only bowl game on this list so far that is not played by a conference versus conference championship game. The Cotton Bowl was created in 1937 by Texas oil tycoon, J. Curtis Sanford, who wanted a Texas Bowl and, and financed the game himself. Sanford guaranteed the two competing teams $10,000 to play in the game. The Cotton Bowl Stadium was opened in 1930 and hosted the game until 2010 when it moved to Jerry World. The stadium still hosts Red River. 
those would remain the only bowl games until 1946 when the Gator Bowl arrived. The city of Jacksonville for years had tried to get a bowl game up and running with no avail and the first few years of the Gator Bowl went undersold until it finally picked up steam come the fourth Gator Bowl. In 1955, the Gator Bowl would be the first bowl game ever to be broadcasted on national television. A few years later, the Citrus Bowl was created in 1947 and was sponsored by the members of the Elk Lodge number 1079 of Orlando. Each member put up $100 to fund the game initially, and the game has gone through multiple iterations since. It has since become the largest non-college football playoff game, matchup featuring members of the SEC and Big Ten, and since 1985 has featured two teams ranked within the NCAA's Top 25, except for Auburn in 2021 and Purdue in 2023. This year's matchup will be played between number 20 Iowa and number 25 Tennessee. For the next 12 years, there would not be another bowl game created until 1959 when the Liberty Bowl was formed. The Liberty Bowl was created in 1959 by A.F. Bud Dudley, a former Villanova athletic director in Philadelphia. The name came from Philadelphia's Liberty Bell, and that is why the logo featured the bell. After five years, the game was moved to Atlantic City, New Jersey, became the first indoor bowl game when it was played at Atlantic City's Conventional Hall. After a few years in southern New Jersey, the game was moved to Memphis, Tennessee. For many years, the games were played on New Year's Day to give fans time to travel due to the fact that commercial air travel was so expensive at the time or non-existent. The only time the games were not played on New Year's Day was when it fell on Sunday to avoid scaring the horses at the local churches. During the Rose Bowl and the tradition continued, the NFL became the king of Sundays. The Peach Bowl began in 1968 as a fundraising event for the Lions Club of Georgia did not find a lot of early success when it came to attendance. But the game exploded in popularity years later and was sponsored by Chick-fil-A in 1997. It has been one of the most competitive bowl games with about 53% of the games being decided by a touchdown or less. The last game I want to highlight specifically is the Fiesta Bowl, which was created in 1971 because the WAC was mad that they did not get their champion invited to a bowl game. Until 1978, it had ties with the WAC, guaranteeing their champion spot in the game. The game moved away from the tie-in when Arizona and Arizona State left for the then Pac-10 conference at the time. The game has had an annual parade like the Rose Bowl, which began in 1973. Throughout the years, there were on and off bowl games like the Bacardi Bowl hosted in Havana, Cuba, which was started in 1907 and had seven iterations through the mid-1940s. Dallas and Fort Worth had a few games until the creation of the Cotton Bowl, while multiple cities in California, Texas, Illinois, Ohio, and Kentucky tried to get games going but failed to see any success. We now miss out on games like the Salad Bowl, Corn Bowl, and Gotham Bowl, which was played in New York City in the 60s. Since the 1970s, the number of bowl games have exploded up to 41 in the mid-2010s. In the 1990s, many bowl games began to modify or abandon the traditional names in favor of selling naming rights. Today, many feel like there are too many bowl games and that they have lost their luster, but that has seemingly always been the case and it's not a new thing. In 1937, Minnesota head coach Bernie Bierman said, This matter of bowl games is getting beyond control. However, if it keeps up, there will be so many of them, it will be a joke. In the late 1940s, there were only 14 bowl games recognized by the NCAA, but over 50 games played. The reason for so many bowl games today is, and who would have guessed, money reasons. TV money became a big reason we have so many bowl games created over the past few years that are sanctioned by the NCAA. We're in a banner society. Every bowl game was in the top five in sports for the day, save for one, and all of them made the top 15 on cable overall. 2.5 million views for a football game between Troy and Ohio. To many, bowl games may not seem special, but to me, they are some of my favorite parts of the season. It allows players national limelight an opportunity to finish their season on a high note. It also gives us some fantastic endings to games. What do you think? What is your favorite bowl game? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching and as always remember to embrace the grind.